I know you're seeing these videos all over YouTube, the best products of 2023, the worst products of 2023. I'm here to switch it up a little bit and talk about the most underrated products of 2023. These are products that I think are so good. The quality is amazing. They perform really, really well, but they're kind of like hidden gems. I don't hear as many people talking about these. You probably won't see them in a ton of like people's top favorite videos because for whatever reason, they're just really underrated. I personally think they deserve a little more hype, more love. They are definitely some of my most used products of the year and just purchases I'm really, really happy with. So I thought I would share them with you in today's video. Let's be honest, pretty much everything Elf releases goes viral. Like the brand as a whole, just people love them and I love them too, don't get me wrong. And I don't find that there are quite as many like hidden gems from Elf as there used to be because they are such a popular brand and people just love the products as a whole. But one release that has not gotten enough love in my opinion is the Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. This is so good. I know so many people love the original Poreless Putty Primer and at this point they have a ton of variations. They have some that have like skincare ingredients, they have mattifying primers, they have the original. And as much as I like the original, I have to say, in my opinion, this one is better. First of all, it's just a little bit easier to apply this. Because it is a liquid, you can just smooth it onto the skin without any effort and it sinks in and it primes your skin so well. The original one is easy to apply. Like you can use your fingers or a brush or a sponge, but there's something about this one that just goes on effortlessly. And I think it actually preps my skin better than the original. Because it is a liquid, I feel like I get more of an even application. And when I wear foundation on top of this, it looks perfect every time. Like if I have a foundation that normally enhances texture and I pair it with this primer, the foundation all of a sudden is like a super smoothing formula. If you have a lot of texture, if you have large pores, if you have fine lines, this is a great option because it really creates this super smooth, silky canvas but it actually also controls oil. A lot of the time, really smoothing primers make my skin look more oily or my foundation breaks apart super quickly because my skin is almost like a little bit too silky. That's not the case with this one. It definitely creates more of a matte base. So if you have extremely oily skin or you want your makeup to actually last all day, this is a great option. I think it's a really good alternative to the Power Grip Primer if you don't want such a hydrating or glowy base, but you still want longevity. This product launched in the beginning of 2023, and I really haven't heard anyone talk about these. Honestly, I'm surprised that these didn't go viral because it's somewhat similar to a lot of other popular products, but almost better in a lot of ways. It's from About Face. It is their lip color butter. So I have the shade or it's their Cherry Pick Lip Color Butter, and I have the shade Kiwi Fizz. It looks like the typical glossy, balmy lip product. You click it up and it comes out on top, but this one actually has a lot more pigment than other products. I personally do tend to be more into like sheer lip colors like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, the Hourglass Balms, but there is a time and a place in my makeup routine for more of a pigmented lipstick. I mean, I have one on today. It's kind of similar to this. I should have just worn this, but I wasn't planning on filming this video. I just had like a few extra minutes today, so I sat down to film this. It is incredibly rich, super moisturizing, very, very comfortable, and again, it has really good pigment. So if that's what you're looking for in a lipstick formula, I do recommend trying these. They have a ton of different shades. They have like really bright, vibrant colors like hot pinks, they have a red, and if you're ever shopping on Ulta's website or you're looking for like a rich, beautiful lipstick. I highly recommend this formula. It's very comfortable, really, really nourishing. Another great, like very moisturizing lipstick formula with good pigment is this one from LYS Beauty. And I know LYS Beauty has had some viral products, but I think this is such an underrated formula from them. Again, this launched early 2023. I think I bought it back in like February because I was doing a video on some of the more affordable products at Sephora. And I just love this formula. They have, I believe like seven different shades. So again, not a ton of options. It is incredibly comfortable. It's very rich, very moisturizing, but it's also really long wearing for more of a cream lipstick. It stays in place well, it's very comfortable comfortable. It's not transfer proof, but I don't find that I have to reapply it as much as I do other cream lipstick formulas because it is more long wearing. Also, the packaging is so cute. Like this is the cutest lipstick I own. I honestly just want to like throw it in my purse and bring it with me everywhere because it is so pretty. And I'm not usually like a big packaging person. Like the packaging has to be functional. It doesn't necessarily have to be super cute, but there's something about this that just makes me want to use it because it's really cute. So just an added bonus, but the actual formula is great. 
I don't think I'm going to do a video sharing like all of the eyeshadow palettes I tried in 2023 because there weren't a ton of them. And if I ranked them, it would probably take like five minutes to be honest with you. But I think one of the best formulas I tried is this one from Catrice. These are $6 eyeshadow palettes, which is really just mind blowing to me because if a brand like Catrice can launch a formula like this for $6, I really don't know what other brands have as an excuse because this formula is great. I do like high-end eyeshadow, but there are so many good drugstore formulas. I think I did a video not too long ago on my favorite drugstore palettes. I'll link it below if you want some more alternatives. But these shadows from Catrice are amazing. They're very, very lightweight and very buildable. So you can get like a very soft, sheer look, but you can also build them up to look pretty intense on the eyes too. I think they're really nice if you're in a hurry or you don't want like a super involved look because they're very quick and easy to work with. But like I said, if you do want something more dramatic, you can take the time to create more of a smoky look. They're just silky, very smooth, very light. You know how some shadows are kind of like thicker and heavier like Natasha Denona. So if you want intense pigment right away, like that's a good formula to choose. And I like that type of formula, but I also like something that's just very buildable, very blendable and quick. And this is the formula that I tend to reach for the most when I want like that super light texture on my eyes. I highly recommend these. You can't go wrong. I mean, for $6, I'm honestly shocked that they don't charge more, but Catrice as a whole is a brand that tends to keep their prices lower. And I just think the quality is amazing. So I really don't think high-end brands have an excuse for creating mediocre palettes when a brand like Catrice can create something like this for $6. This is such a random product that I did not expect to like really at all, let alone love. It's from Too Faced. It's their Better Than Sex Foreplay Mascara Primer. So I've used a couple of different mascara primers. It's not something I always incorporate into my routine because I do feel like I have a lot of mascaras that perform well enough on their own or I might layer them with another mascara. But this is a true game changer in my opinion. This is great if you want to add thickness to your lashes. If you have very sparse lashes and no matter what mascara you use, you just feel like it doesn't do enough in the volume department, this is a great option because it really makes your lashes super thick, really, really voluminous. It also lifts and curls the lashes. I don't like using an eyelash curler. So, you know, I noticed that some mascaras will actually weigh my lashes down. And because I don't even take the time to curl them in the first place, they can look very straight and weighed down and heavy. And what I like about this is it basically works like an eyelash curler. When I apply this to my lashes, they're instantly lifted and it looks like I actually took the time to curl them. And when I apply mascara on top, it still looks like that. Like they still look lifted and curled and open. The other thing that I love about this is it actually holds your mascara into place. So if you have a mascara that tends to flake or smudge throughout the day and you apply this first, that mascara is not going anywhere. Like this works extremely well. And I really never thought I would say a high-end mascara primer is worth it. A couple of cons about this product, just to be completely honest with you, it is very hard to remove. I have to use like a waterproof eye makeup remover I like the Garnier Micellar Water one. And even then, I usually still have to take like a little bit of extra time and gently remove it. So if you're not a fan of eye products that are hard to take off, I would skip over this. But because it locks your eye or locks your mascara into place so well, I do think that's why it is so hard to remove at the end of the night. At the end of the night. The other con about this is it does kind of leak a little bit. It's strange because when you you know, take it off or open it up. It doesn't look waxy, but then as you like continuously use it and close it, it's almost like it's a solid that kind of melts, like a cleansing balm texture, but it does kind of like leak and melt around the lid. So it's it's pretty messy. I just try to like store mine like this so it doesn't actually like leak on my products. It's not the end of the world, but it is something to point out. It's a little bit of a messy product just when you have it stored. All of that being said, it really is the most effective mascara primer I've ever tried. It makes my favorite mascaras even better. It makes my least favorite mascaras wearable so I don't actually have have to just get rid of them and I'm impressed by it. I definitely think it is worth it if you're a fan of mascara primers.
The Bare Minerals Blonzers got so much hype, but those went viral and they sold out and I feel like you couldn't actually get your hands on them for a little while. So I was kind of surprised that these did not get the same love, but I actually like these better. These are from Bare Minerals as well, the Gen Nude Highlighting Blushes. If you've tried these, you'll have to let me know what you think because I just don't hear anyone really talk about them. And I think it's maybe because they are more so like an actual highlighter than a blush. And I think blush as a whole tends to be more popular than highlighter. But you can definitely use these in place of a blush. If you love a good glowy blush, almost like a blush highlighter two-in-one, this is going to be a product that you'll really enjoy. So I have one shade, I have Mauve Glow. I kind of wanna pick up a little bit of a lighter shade because for me, it's a little bit too dark to use as an actual highlighter so I do end up using it as a blush and I love the way it looks even as I've kind of moved away from super glowy or shimmery blushes I still love this and I incorporate it into my makeup looks all the time the color is absolutely perfect I love the shade of this and it really gives your skin the most beautiful glow it's very smoothing it has a creaminess to it it's definitely a powder but it's a super creamy powder it doesn't look powdery or dry on the skin at all all. So I do want to pick up another shade at some point. I just feel like I have a lot of cheek products. I'm not really planning on buying like a ton of makeup over the next few months other than like the occasional drugstore product to review on my channel. But at some point when I do buy another blush, probably as we head into the spring and summer, because that's when I feel like this will really come in handy, I will grab another shade. But it is a beautiful formula if you love a good glowy, almost highlighter-esque blush. Heart Candy actually had a lot of great launches this year. It, I feel like they're making a little bit of a comeback. Like for a long time, I didn't hear much about Hard Candy. And then in 2023, I have heard more people talking about them. I get my Hard Candy products at Walmart, but I've also ordered directly from the Hard Candy website too. I feel like they're not quite as popular as other affordable brands because they're not sold at like the typical drugstore. But whenever I'm at Walmart, I check to see what new launches they have. And my favorite launch from them this year would be their, what are these called again? Their Instapout Plumping Lip Melts. These are $7 lip products that in my opinion, out perform high-end alternatives. They're very similar to like the Makeup by Mario plumping lip balms. Honestly, I almost like these a little bit more than the Makeup by Mario ones. I feel like they're extra smooth on the lips. Whereas the Makeup by Mario ones, like if you apply a little bit too much, they look and feel kind of heavy. Like they're almost too gloopy. I think I've said that before. I don't know if that's actually a word, but they're it's easy to over apply those and it just feel like you have too much product on your lips. Whereas these are a little bit more, I want to say like refined, like they're balmy, but you can't, they're not quite as melty. I mean, they're very, very similar. So there are not like major distinct differences between the two. You really can't go wrong with either one of them, but the hard candy ones are a lot less expensive. So if you aren't sure that you would like the Makeup by Mario formula and you kind of want to try something similar, maybe pick one of these up and try them out and see if you enjoy them. And if you do, and there's like a Makeup by Mario color you feel like you have to have, you could go with one of those afterwards. They only have, I believe like six or seven shades, but I feel like they have a pretty good range. Like they have nude, they have pinks and I have two of them and I feel like I wear them quite a bit. I wear the one a little bit more because this is more of like a true nude and that's what I typically go for, but they're so nice on their own. They're great over lip liner and I also like wearing them over lipstick too because if you have a lipstick that's kind of dry feeling, you can just apply this on top for like that extra added shine and gloss and comfort and they're great. So I highly recommend these. If I didn't know they were $7 lipsticks, I would think they were like $20 lipsticks. I know I had a lot of lip products in today's video, but I do have one more to share with you. This is the Tower 28 Juice Balm. I really like these. They came out in, I want to say the spring, and I really haven't heard anyone talk about them. Again, they only launched four shades, and I think sometimes when a brand doesn't launch like a ton of shades, it's not quite as appealing, obviously, because if you're not into the four specific shades they launched, you probably won't want to pick one of these up. But what I like about these is they're very easy to wear. I've tried a couple of tinted lip balms over the years and there are good alternatives that are maybe a little bit more affordable. ColourPop has some, but ColourPops have a very strong scent that I know a lot of people don't like. I feel like it's kind of like a citrusy, fruity scent, but for whatever reason, like a lot of people hate the scent so much to the point where they actually won't wear them. These are actually unscented, and I do love a good fruity scent when it comes to lip products, but I know a lot of people are super sensitive to fragrance, and I can actually be that way too sometimes. So it's nice that these don't have a scent if that's what you prefer. They have two that are a little bit more subtle, like very, very sheer, and two that have more pigment. 
These are my two favorite shades. The orange one is called Squeeze. This one has a lot of pigment, and even though it is a tinted lip balm and it's not going to stay in place all day long, the color actually lasts on the lips a lot longer than you would expect it to. So if that's what you prefer, I would go with Squeeze or like the Deep Berry one. But if you just, again, want something super light, moisturizing, something you can throw on and reapply on the go, I would go with this shade, which is Mix, and then they also have have like a light soft pink. I would say if you have something similar, you don't necessarily need to like run out and buy these right away, but I do think they are a really good launch that deserved a little bit more love. I do have two different products from Urban Decay. So in the beginning of 2023, or maybe in the spring of 2023, I thought they were going to be discontinuing the Perversion Liquid Liner because they launched this product. And I don't actually know if they did discontinue that, but I apparently I haven't repurchased it because I'm still using this one and I feel like it did take the place. Although I have tried a couple of other liquid liners I like this year too, Danessa Myricks, Fenty. So there are some really good liquid liners out there, including this one though. This is the 24 seven inks liquid liner. I have the black one, but they do have quite a few shades. A couple of things about this liner. It is supposed to be a little bit easier to use because of the shape and the way it's designed. So if you are someone who has a hard time with like a tip typical liquid liner and you don't have a very steady hand, this might be more ideal for you. I can't say for sure because that's not something that I personally typically have a hard time with, but there is something about the shape of it I feel like is nice to use. They also created this with what they call like flow through technology. So it's supposed to create like a very even line every single time. And I will say I picked this up pretty soon after it launched and I know it launched like in the beginning of the year and I still have mine. Like I still have product in here and it's not the only eyeliner I ever use, but I do use it quite a bit. Like it should have ran out by now and it still works. So honestly, this will last you a really long time. I think the shape of the eyeliner pen is perfect. It does glide on easily. It does help create a very sharp wing and I really enjoy it. Like when I first tried it, I was like, it's good. It's not necessarily like the most amazing thing I've ever tried, but more often than not, I reach for this one over other liquid liners in my collection. It's not quite as dark or dramatic as some of the other formulas I mentioned, like Danessa Myricks or Fenty. So if you want like a super rich, intense black liner, you might want to go with one of those. It is still a black liner, but it's almost like a subtle black liner compared to those formulas. But that kind of is more what I, that, what am I trying to say? That is almost what I prefer these days compared to a, like an over the top black liner, because I'm not always doing like as intense of eye looks as I used to. I feel like that whole sentence was grammatically incorrect. But long story short, I'm really enjoying this eyeliner and I do wanna pick up maybe like a brown one. I think they have like a metallic bronze one, which could be really interesting too. The other product from Urban Decay is the Naked Quickie Concealer. Okay, I feel like this got a little bit of hype when they first launched it. There were so many concealer launches in 2023. I didn't try all of them, but there are other ones that I've talked about more on my channel, like Natasha Denona, or Tower 28. But you know what? I do really like my Urban Decay concealer. I use this a lot. I actually end up using this more in place of foundation than I do as actual concealer because it has such a gorgeous skin-like finish. It is incredibly blendable. It's very quick and easy to apply. It does come with a brush on the end. I don't use that brush, but if you're in a really big hurry, you can use that and you don't even have to carry a separate brush with you. But I just think the texture of this concealer is nice. It's definitely different than a lot of the other ones I have in my collection. And it's like a good staple creamy moisturizing formula that looks good, that has that like beautiful skin-like almost satin finish, but it actually lasts on the skin too. Listen, I know this is a little bit of a controversial topic, but sometimes before I go to the gym, I will apply makeup. Not always, I am I'm content going out without any makeup too, but if I have to be somewhere, if I have to run errands, if I have to get on a Zoom call like immediately after the gym, I sometimes feel better if I apply a little bit of concealer, a brow gel, and maybe like a swipe of mascara. And this product actually holds up when I go to the gym. I, you know, I'm sweating, whatever. I have to run errands. I come home and it's been like a few hours. I still look good when I'm wearing this concealer. So that's how I know it is a good formula because I probably wouldn't do that with my Tower 28 formula or even my Natasha Denona formula. But this one is so fast to blend in. It actually lasts. It looks good without being too much. I'm just, I'm a big fan of it. So I wanted to include it in today's video because I just think even though it got love when it first launched, 
it kind of, you know, fell under the radar when everyone was talking about all of the other concealer launches, and I still really enjoy mine. So those are all of my underrated kind of hidden gem favorites of the year. I think at this point, by the time this video goes up, I will have already uploaded my best of 2023 videos. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description box below. I might do two separate ones, like drugstore and more expensive makeup, or I might just do drugstore. So whatever's up on my channel, I'll link below and on the screen for you. Thank you so much for being here. I would love to know if you have any favorites that you feel like deserve a little more love, let us know in the comments below. I always love trying hidden gems and I will definitely try out some of your suggestions. But otherwise, I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye.